Today, I wanna to give you five tips and techniques to help you create better looks when color grading in DaVinci Resolve. It is going to be rapid fire, so let's not delay any longer. First, assign yourself constraints. Now, this may sound funny because it often feels like constraints limit us creatively, but I have found it to be the exact opposite. Self-imposed constraints help you to define the playground that you get to build within. And this is modeled all over the place. Alfred Hitchcock is a great example of this. He often had self-imposed constraints on his films. Uh, take Rear Window. It was almost entirely shot from the perspective of one apartment. Rope was his version of a one-shot film. Now, since they had a limited length of physical film roles, there are a few cuts in there, but a really remarkable piece for the time. Uh, Birds had no conventional music score. In color grading, this may look like trying to build your look completely within one node. Use it as a learning opportunity about the order of operations within a node in the DaVinci Resolve manual. Maybe you are traditionally reliant on LUTs or plugins for your look. Try building a look completely from scratch, or maybe even just pick a single tool. Try to build it with the curves tool. One of the main reasons I put together the simple guide for crafting your look is to focus on the five core elements of building a look. Now, are there more than five options? Of course there are. But if you focus on getting really good at these five, you'll get stuck less often and find more interesting results. Second technique, try recreating your favorite LUTs by hand. Now, it's often very difficult to get a truly one-to-one -one recreation of a LUT, especially because you don't really know what was going on behind the scenes to get it created. But see how far you can get. This practice has led to some really great discoveries in my experience. For example, I was once working on a film where the director really strongly wanted us to grade underneath their on-set monitoring LUT. But it was a hybrid LUT. It had a, a white point shift that was baked into it along with that display transform, and I just knew this had the potential to cause some headaches during the grade. But after doing some experimenting, I found that after applying my color management, I could recreate nearly all of the LUT's qualities with some simple curves adjustments. This allowed me to eliminate the white point shift while still keeping the tonality that they were looking for. Next. Rather than trying to recreate the look of a single film, pull inspiration from multiple images and multiple films. Sometimes when we are trying to match the inspiration image to a scene that we're grading, we can get too tunnel visioned about matching them forensically. But when you look at multiple frames, even from different films, you ask yourself, what are the commonalities between them that you're trying to emulate? It, do you like the contrast levels? Is it the hue rotations, the shadow roll off? What if you tried to create a look that is the synthesis of these inspiration images, taking the best elements of each and bringing them together into a cohesive whole? This is also a helpful technique if you have a client that is really focused on the look from a single movie. It helps move the discussion from, uh, just match the Joker look to what are the qualities of these different films that speak to you as an artist? Fourth, break the rules, then do it properly. Sometimes you just need to break things to see what happens. As a story to illustrate, a little while back, I delivered a show LUT for a project that was going to be shot on a Blackmagic camera. So I developed the show LUT assuming the Gen 5 color science. But when the director and DP loaded it into the camera monitor, they realized that the camera firmware was still on Gen 4, which means they were seeing way more contrast than what was initially intended for the look. But you know what happened? They actually loved it. Now, there were of course some issues that we had to solve. I wasn't gonna leave things as is. Obviously, I reworked the look to use proper color science and the, the best practices around look building. But by misusing things, we ended up with a much bolder result than what otherwise would have happened. And finally, try some new tools. There are a host of DCTLs and plugins and power grades that exist online. Go give them a try. There's something about trying something new that helps you find fresh and innovative solutions. One of the ways I like to test a new plugin out is to force myself to build a look option with it on the project, to at least see what can happen if I make it a required part of my grade. 
It doesn't work on every film, but every once in a while, I will stumble onto a new method that gives great results. And then that method can get added to my tool bag for future projects. If you're looking to experiment more with your grades, an often misunderstood tool is the RGB mixer. Check out this video where I go into detail on how this can level up your grades. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Also, make sure to like and subscribe with the notification bell to not miss any future videos. Thanks, friends.